The industrialization is encroaching upon the largest economy in Europe and it is struggling to ward off this trend. Let us explore the factors contributing to the situation. Taking a journey back in time to post World War II, Germany underwent significant political and social transformations, dismantling the Nazi regime and establishing a democratic West Germany. These changes bolstered confidence in Germany's peaceful intentions, fostering international cooperation, economic integration, and prosperity without nurturing political ideologies. As countries planted the seeds of unity, Germany reconstructed critical infrastructure, attracting American and European firms with skilled labor, stable policies, and a central European location, turning it into a hub of high-tech industry. Welcome to TFI Global, the antidote to mass delusion. A failed state is a political entity that has severely deteriorated to the point where the government cannot enforce laws, maintain order, or provide basic public services. This breakdown in governance leads to widespread corruption, economic collapse, and social fragmentation. The government loses legitimacy and control over its territory, allowing armed groups and criminal networks to fill the power vacuum. Failed states often face humanitarian crisis with significant populations displaced by violence or deprivation. These states pose global security risks by becoming safe heavens for terrorism and organized crime, destabilizing regions and challenging international peace efforts. But the question is, can Germany become a failed state. While Germany's position as an industrial powerhouse stretches back centuries, whispers of its reign coming to an end have started to resonate increasingly loudly. Once synonymous with precision engineering and robust manufacturing, the nation now navigates a turbulent landscape. Speaking at a recent Bloomberg event, Germany's finance minister Christian Lindner hinted at the country's downward spiral. He says, the country is no longer competitive and is falling behind economically. Germany's reign as an industrial superpower is coming to an end. The EU's economic giant will eventually suffer from a protracted period of little to no expansion, according to Lindner, who also serves as the leader of the Free Democratic Party of the nation. We are no longer competitive, Lindner said. We are getting poorer because we have no growth. We are falling behind. He added. His remarks coincide with the release of a gloomy outlook by the Organization of Economic Cooperation and Development, which cut its forecast for German growth this year by half to just 0.3%. This is significantly less than the 2.9% growth it expects for the G20 and significantly lower than the 0.6% growth it projects for the Eurozone. In the meantime, it is anticipated that this week's industrial production figures will be the lowest since 2008, a year in which the fallout from the global economic crisis severely damaged German industry. This status published official preliminary statistics in January that indicated a 0.3% decline in price-adjusted GDP in the previous year. In the meantime, there was a 2% decline in industrial output apart from construction, which was mostly caused by significantly decreased output in the energy supply sector. Deindustrialization is encroaching upon the largest economy in Europe, and it is struggling to ward off this trend. Let us explore the factors contributing to the situation. Taking a journey back in time to post-World War II, Germany underwent significant political and social transformations, dismantling the Nazi regime and establishing a democratic West Germany. These changes bolstered confidence in Germany's peaceful intentions, fostering international cooperation, economic integration, and prosperity without nurturing political ideologies. As countries planted the seeds of unity, Germany reconstructed critical infrastructure, attracting American and European firms with skilled labor, stable policies, and a central European location, turning it into a hub of high-tech industry. However, the 2008 financial crisis dealt a severe blow impacting Germany's export-reliant economy, leading to a sharp decline in GDP in 2009, exposing vulnerabilities in its financial system and reigniting debates on austerity and fiscal responsibilities within the EU. Germany was just catching its breath after the 2008 financial crisis when the 2015 immigration crisis struck. Angela Merkel swung open the doors, ushering in a wave of immigrants that reshaped the country's economic identity. The shift from a staunchly capitalist ethos to one embracing welfare principles was like a seismic ripple, a blow to the country's economic vigor. Embracing a substantial influx of immigrants demanded a hefty investment cocktail in vital sectors such as housing, education, and healthcare inevitably applying pressure on public budgets, particularly in the initial stages. The dynamics of the labor market underwent a metamorphosis with dissenting voices contending that the arrival of newcomers sparked competition with low-skilled native workers, a scenario that exerted a downward force on wages. As cultures intertwined, anxieties about assimilation 
and cultural integration started emerging as potential flashpoints, igniting social tensions and casting shadows of political instability. Such apprehensions casted ripples across the economic landscape, impacting confidence and investments in unforeseen ways. The influx of migration also created law and order nightmare in Germany. The scenario continues till date. Then came Chancellor Scholz, whose role in Germany's economic recovery was pretty hands-off. People were expecting more proactive leadership, but Scholz did not deliver. Whether it was a lack of fresh ideas or not dealing with pressing economic issues, he did not come across as someone who was bankable or even at the top of things. His time in charge is always leaving folks questioning if he's really committed to getting Germany back on its feet. Germany's economy took a hit during the 2020 COVID-19 crisis and the repercussions are still lingering. Olaf Scholz's response to the ongoing economic challenges has been met with criticism for its perceived lack of effectiveness, despite the pressing need for robust measures to counter the aftermath of the pandemic. Scholz's initiatives have been viewed as slow-moving, much like his wit. Germany suffered its first recession since the start of the pandemic, extinguishing hopes that Europe's top economy could escape such a fate after the war in Ukraine sent energy prices Soaring. First quarter output shrank 0.3% from the previous three months following a 0.5% drop between October and December. The result was a setback for Germany, which despite escaping the bleakest scenarios feared in the aftermath of Russia-Ukraine war. Manufacturers who were previously having difficulty staying cost competitive are now suffering a final blow due to the lack of inexpensive Russian natural gas in the midst of the Ukraine crisis. Germany's industrial output has been declining since 2017 and since Moscow cut off gas imports. In 2022, as retaliation for the conflict in Ukraine, the decline has increased. According to Bloomberg, firms are shifting their production lines to countries with lower prices as centuries-old enterprises close. There is not a lot of hope, if I'm honest. Stefan Klebert, CEO at machinery maker GEA Group AG, told the outlet, I'm really uncertain that we can halt this trend. Many things would have to change very quickly, said the businessman. According to a poll conducted by the Federation of German Industries in September of last year, the main reasons for moving investment overseas are energy security and cost concerns, among the industries most negatively impacted by the loss of Russian gas chemical manufacturers. The largest chemical maker in Europe, BASF-SE and Langsness AG, are eliminating thousands of jobs. Both US, Goodyear and French tire manufacturer Michelin are closing or reducing their German operations. According to Bloomberg, Maria Rotker, regional head of Michelin, prices are too high for German exporters to prosper. Despite the motivation of our employees, we have arrived at a point where we cannot export truck tires from Germany at competitive prices. If Germany cannot export competitively in the international context, the country loses one of its biggest strengths said Maria. The German finance minister acknowledged the crisis at a Bloomberg conference earlier this month. We are no longer competitive, he said, and he added that we are getting poorer because we have no growth, we are falling behind. The fourth quarter of the last year saw further contraction in the German economy. According to a research by the consulting firm Alvarez & Marcel, 15% of German businesses have troubled balance sheets. According to the business, Germany has the highest distress rate in Europe, up from 9% last year. Russian President Vladimir Putin claimed in December that instead of advancing their own interests through economic cooperation, Western countries are playing the fool by hoping for Russia's collapse at the expense of their own people. He accused German officials of condoning the bombings of the Nord Stream pipelines, which he placed on the CIA, instead of carelessly arming own economy in response to US pressure. Bloomberg said German manufacturers also have been hurt by crumbling infrastructure, an aging workforce, bureaucratic red tape, a weakening education system, and increased competition from China. You see, the EU and China engaged in a trade war which dealt major economic setbacks on Germany's economy. The coupling of the EU and Germany from China resulted in retaliatory measures from the latter that costed Germany almost six times as much as Brexit. This is the finding of a scenario analysis conducted by the IFO Institute on behalf of the Bavarian industry association. Those in Germany who stand to lose the most in a continued trade war with China would be the automotive industry, that is $8,306 million, companies producing transportation equipment, that is $1,529 million, and manufacturers of machinery and equipment, that is $5,201 
billion. Germany finds itself in the relentless grip of economic strains. The nation already navigating the economic pressures is now waltzing through a relentless barrage of further setbacks. So we come to the dreaded question again. Can Germany turn into a failed state? The chances are quite high as far as the current trends are concerned. Germany's current government is in a policy paralysis mode. People are restive. Neopolitical parties are coming to existence every day, giving faint hints of pre-Nazi Germany. Industries have been the biggest strengths of Germany, but they are failing. In obeying the US and going all out against Russia, Germany has lost all its energy lines. Germany is still funding war and inviting migrants. But these are reversible trends. But if these trends continue, the economy will shrink by nearly 30% in the next 20 25 years. If that happens, it cannot be a proper functioning democracy. And that's the most conducive environment for lawlessness to set in. And that is when Germany turns into a failed state.